Hey guys, today we'll be doing an interesting video where I'll be teaching you something that's pretty common nowadays, but I'm going to be teaching you how to do that from scratch. And that is particularly what you see in front of you. It is a full page scroller, which basically scrolls in sections. And as you can see, if I scroll down, we have a light and a dark section. Now, what's important about this and why is this specifically an Alpine thing is obviously you're going to be learning a lot of HTML, CSS and how to do these effects so on and so forth. But what's really important is for you to see these dots. These dots are dark by default, but when it automatically detects that a section that's darker has come behind it, it actually turns them to white. Um, so obviously we have added that detection on, on this particular section that, hey, if the section comes, then you should turn these dots to white. So that is something that we've done. And what we've also done is changed the dot, uh, the selected dot. So here are a bunch of things that we would be tackling today. And I'll just be teaching you how to do this, including some of the Alpine JS stuff. So without further ado, let's just get started. So the first thing that you obviously need is you can go ahead and include the Alpine plugin intersect, which you can find here. So as you can see, if you go to intersect alpine.js, here you can find the intersect. Here you can file in the Alpine.js. I've included them both. I also have Tailwind just to create the styles really quickly. And then I have my styles.css. I'm just gonna quickly go ahead and delete this stuff. So we can talk about it later or I can just comment it just so we can come to it later. But first of all, now I would start with a body tag. And as you do with any Alpine.js video, for the most part, you'll go ahead and actually define the X minus data properties. Now let's just think, what X minus data properties do we need defined? Well, the first thing that we can do is <clears throat> we can go ahead and we can define some stuff along those lines of, for example, whether the dots that are appearing on the left are white or not. And then we can also talk about which what active section it is. So I'm just going to go ahead and we can add the advanced JavaScript later, but I'm going to say, okay, section, let's just go ahead and say section color, or we can just simply say whether it's white. So we're going to define the white property. We're going to say white by default is going to be true. And then we can go ahead and define something else like, for example, the active dot, we can say the active dot or the active section, let's just call it active section is the first one by default, obviously. Okay, so now that we have that, let's just go ahead and quickly create our dots. So in order to create, or maybe let's just go ahead and quickly create the sections first. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say this is going to be a sections div. In the section div, we are going to have two sections basically like this and we're gonna go ahead and apply some classes to it. So I'm gonna say that this one is just gonna be H minus screen. Well, I don't need to actually define two sections. I can just copy this one once all of the classes are done. And then what we need to do is we need to apply the image. So I have this image stored on the other window. I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this image. So here's the image. I'm just gonna format it. So as you can see, I have this image here. And here's the closing tag of the div. Now, obviously we need to add some text here. So I'm gonna say reach new heights. And then I need to go ahead and just see how this looks. I'm gonna to go to my page. So here I have the current page and this is exactly what I see right now. So I see the reach new heights thing and we obviously wanna go ahead and center it. So I'm gonna say flex items minus center and justify minus center. That's gonna center the content. Then I'm gonna say the text size for this can be 5xl and the font can be bold maybe so here we have the reach new heights thing we want to go ahead and create another section like this i'm just going to go ahead and duplicate this everything else should remain the same only the text should be white in this since this is going to be a darker section i'm going to copy the text that i have here on the left and copy the image so here we have the image Let's just go ahead and copy this. So now you should actually have two sections. And as you can see, they occupy the full height of the screens. And that's done because obviously these are taking H minus screen. If you aren't really sure what these classes are doing, you should definitely check out my Tailwind and HTML CSS videos. I talk about um, designing with Tailwind in those. But basically what this H minus screen does, it basically tells the browser 
or the element that this particular section needs to take the same amount of space as the actual screen size that's available. Sometimes I can also do H minus full, which basically tells them to actually take the height 100%, but height 100% does not work until and unless you actually have a height 100% applied or a minimum height 100% applied or something along those lines applied to the container. So which is why I just say H minus screen because it's not container specific. Uh, as it's H minus full actually takes the height of the container rather than the screen. So now that that's done, uh, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna first of all do something where I can I can normally scroll to these screens, right? But what I want is I want sort of a sticky effect in the scroll. And in order to get that sticky effect, like for example, if I scroll down to this section, it should automatically go to this section and it should be sticky. In order to do that, I'm just gonna go to my styles.css and as you can see, I have commented this out. So I'm gonna say sections. These are our sections. First of all, I'm gonna say this section is also gonna have a height of 100 VH. This height 100 VH is pretty similar to the H minus screen that I applied previously. If I wanna apply it, uh, apply it there as a table in class, I can, but it doesn't matter. Similarly, I'm gonna say there's gonna be an overflow auto on this section, on the container of these two sections so that the section div scrolls rather than the body scrolling. So that's there. Now, in order to get, get that snappy effect, we are gonna say scroll snap type, and we're gonna say that it's gonna be Y and it's gonna be mandatory. So it's we're basically saying that the scrolling and the snapping and all of that functionality that we wanna have here should be on the Y axis, not on the X axis. So I'm gonna say Y and obviously I'm gonna add the MS just as a uh, vendor prefix. And then I'm gonna do the same thing again, say the scroll behavior should be smooth. So even if you don't add these two things, I think it should still work, but we obviously just add these prefixes so that it supports a slightly larger amount of browsers. So now that that's done, uh, if we just go ahead and let's say comment this out and try to play around with it, nothing really happens because we have to define on the child uh, where exactly should it align when you actually start scrolling. So if I say save after replacing this class, now it should work. If I should go down, as you can see, it's automatically going down. If I go up, it's automatically going up. So that's for the most part the HTML CSS, HTML, CSS parts of things. If you just wanna create scrolling and snapping sections like this. But now to the fun stuff. The first thing I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and create the dots. And the dots may seem simple, but that's where most of the complexity in Alpine comes in, and obviously it makes it easier. So in order to create the dots, I first of all have to, let's just go ahead and by HTML, CSS, create the dots without doing anything else. So I'm gonna say class, I'm gonna say W minus three, H minus three. So I'm basically, three is 12 pixels, so. 12 pixels width, 12 pixels height, and then I'm gonna say it's gonna be a rounded full because I want it completely rounded. So now that I have that, I think this makes our dot, but it's not gonna be visible because it does not have any background, it does not have any border or anything along those lines. I'm also gonna go ahead and give this a BG minus green so you can see where this particularly is. So it is here, but we obviously wanna align it to the left, so I'm gonna say fixed. I'm gonna say flex, I'm gonna say items minus center, sorry, justify minus center, and I'm gonna say flex minus call. This basically is gonna go ahead and align it upside down. And now if I say H minus screen, it's gonna have the dots in the middle. So if I just give this dot a background, you, you should be able to see it. Now, as you can see, we have two dots here, one of which you don't see because I haven't added a background on it, but basically they're in the middle, so you can believe me on that. So now that we have that, we also wanna go ahead and add some spacing in between the dots. So I'm gonna say we wanna have a 16 pixel spacing in between them. And we also wanna have a padding on the left and the right. So we can say there should be a padding here as well. Now that we have that done, let's just go ahead and remove the green thing here. Now what I wanna do is I wanna add some conditional classes to this. I wanna go ahead and say <clears throat> that there should be a conditional class and you apply a conditional class like this using the binding thing. Now you can go ahead and specify the class. What class do I want particularly on this? I can say, I wanna have a border minus black class here. Let me just go ahead and actually change this to double code so the inner ones don't conflict. So I wanna say, I wanna have a border minus black class when, and then I'm gonna define the condition. When do I wanna have it? When 
this section is active. So I want to say when this six, sorry, not when this section is active, I want to have the border minus the back class when uh, this white is equals to true, right? So I'm just going to go ahead and first of all, obviously, I want to add the border here as well. So as you can see, now we have the border and maybe the border can be slightly thicker. So as you can see, now we have the border and we have the border minus black here because obviously the white value is true. Similarly, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say if the this particular section, the one that I see in front of me is the first one, then I want this this particular dot to actually be BG minus black. So I want to have this dot to be black if, for example, the active section is one. So if I do that, as you can see, we have the active section that's one and that should work. Now, if a few things that I want to do now is I want to go ahead and apply the same thing, obviously, to the bottom one as well. But I want to say that if the active section is two, then again, you should obviously make it, yeah, black. Not actually black because the the other section is uh, darker. So we actually want this to be white. And yeah, that's, I think that's pretty much it. Now, obviously, we don't see the border here. And the reason for that is that we're saying, okay, the border should be black if this is white. That makes sense, but we haven't added the border here. So let's just go ahead and add the border. So as you can see, we have the border here. If I go down, nothing is happening. And now obviously some of the intersect magic comes in. Uh, and let me just go ahead and add a marker here. Uh, so now here is where the intersect magic comes in. In order to have this intersect, what we need to do is we need to obviously define a few things. The first thing we want to define is we want to go ahead and say that if, for example, x minus intersect, intersect, this is basically how you apply like x minus data, x minus init, x minus text properties. You have to basically apply this. And I'm just going to go ahead that if this section is intersected, I want to go ahead and say console.log and first. So that means this is the first intersection. And if, I, if this happens, I want to say second which seems pretty simple, I guess. I'm gonna open my console, and as you can see, if, if I just, let's say, close this, I'm gonna go down, nothing is happening. And the reason for that particularly is because I have whole sections inter intersecting. I don't wanna have the whole sections intersecting, I'm gonna say if half of the section is intersecting. So now if you have a look at it, obviously the first section is on the screen, but now if I go down, the second section is on the screen. The intersect part is slightly complicated in the sense of, let me just go ahead and actually show you what I mean here is, I'm just gonna go ahead and instead of having this a height, an H minus screen of, an H minus screen, I'm just gonna say and apply a manual height to it. I'm gonna say the height for this should be 2000 pixels, just to show you something. So the first section is like really long as you can see. And let me just also go ahead and comment this one so I can explain the inter intersect functionality to you. So what happens here is obviously as soon as the first section opens up, that's intersecting. But as you can see now, it's not automatically going to change the dots that I have here to white because it's going to say when half of this section is intersecting, then and only then would I change this to white or whatever it is. So as you can see, we have the first intersect and then after after half of this section actually comes on the page, then it says, okay, now it's intersecting. However, if we actually just went ahead and say X minus intersect normally, then what would happen is anytime basically this particular section just comes in slightly, just slightly, it's gonna again, as you can see, it's gonna trigger the console.log that we have here and this intersect. So since I don't want it to trigger immediately, I want it to trigger after that particular section is on half of the screen, I can go ahead and do this. Now, what I wanna do here is simply just say that the white is no longer gonna be true in this case, it's gonna be false because obviously this is a darker section. And if the above section is intersected, I want this to be true because that's a lighter section. I'm also gonna go ahead and remove, well, even if I don't remove it, let's just see how this looks. So we have the darker section that looks good. If now we come on this particular, if half of this section is now visible, as you can see, this actually appears whiter. And then if I go up, half of the section comes in, then the dots become darker. So now let's just go ahead and remove the height. 
and go back to whatever it is that we were doing h minus screen and now if we just go ahead and scroll obviously the scrolling isn't working so i'm just going to go ahead and save this let me see if i've made a particular mistake i don't think i have so here we have a div but i don't have any other div that's strange i think i mistakenly removed a colon here or a comma or whatever it is so now if you can see if i scroll down the dots turn to white if i scroll up the dot turns the dots turn to black and now the only thing we have to do is we just basically have to change this active section when the intersect is on the second one so i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to say if the inter if this intersects the active section should be two similarly i want to do the same thing and i want to say if the above one intersects the active section should be one so now if i scroll down as you can see this is white if i scroll up this is black and we can do the same thing if we had another dot i, I can go ahead and i can say if the active section is three I want another dot here so this is the second one and let's just go ahead and actually to go on unsplash and choose a colorful image uh, maybe a balloon or whatever so maybe something like this <clears throat> sorry that's a stock image maybe something like this I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna copy it I'm gonna go to my sections I'm gonna create another section here and I'm basically gonna replace this image with the one that I copied here, copy image. And as you can see, we have first, then second, then third, but we didn't add the intersection. So I'm just gonna say this is gonna be third. So one, two, and then three. It's above, and then here, as you can see, the sections are changing, everything is fixed and it all looks good so that's going to be pretty much it for this video let me know if you understood how to again create just these sections without the alpine stuff because that's again even within itself really powerful and then obviously if there's any confusion in the alpine intersect functionality or anything along those lines let me know but that's going to be pretty much it for this video do subscribe to hit the bell icon and i'll see you in the next one take care bye